33. Remember the 33rd degree of masonry? Founding fathers? Remember how they revered number 33? They knew about the atom. They knew about the positive aspect of atomic energy only used for positivity, the power of the mind to create. They knew, and they knew it had to be a numerologist who, who was a, who was on the founding, on the founding fathers. And we know that July 4th, 1776 was our founding day. And if he would have waited one more day, it would have been number 33. But they did it on July 4th of 1776. Why? Because of 7-4. And you know what 7-4 means? Messiah. The secret Messiah. United States of America. Of the people, by the people, and for the people. Now, you all want you to keep this secret, by the way. I don't want you to tell anybody about it. But think of it. The power of the founding fathers, and mothers, by the way. And this is what we are trying to bring into active manifestation. The use of the power of atomic energy and the power of of a mind that is set on changing the world and being there for everybody, all nations, all religions, all philosophies. And we're dealing with that nine day, nine year type of situation that we are, that we are dealing with. So, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe we can. I believe we will. We will be the light of the world. We will pray that everything will be improved, particularly the greatest economy ever. All countries will have the greatest economy they've ever had, starting with this year, springtime of 2017. The, the power of the third chakra and the power of the top chakra the power of mind, and we are going to bring this into manifestation. And the power of peace intervene is really this energy that's going around all over the planet. People are talking about peace. And we're going to be planting that peace. So we are here to create miracles. Anything is possible. People, prototypes who have lived, members of religions, leaders of government, have done, have created miracles. And now, it's in our collective hands. So empower as many people as you can with the light of the world. Because as many people as we have, and this is why the book was written, to make, them aware, to make people aware of their responsibility and how powerful they really were. So thank you for sponsoring this event. Charlotte, thank you. I'm so honored to be here and to meet other lights of the world. We're going to do it. We believe, we believe, we believe. God bless you. Thank you, John. That was fantastic and so inspiring. Uh, thanks again. It was good. So I would like to uh, let you know that I was actually looking out there on the table, and John is taking a trip to Egypt in November. Now, I was like, I would love to do that. And who better than with John? And unfortunately, our calendar does not allow for that, or so it seems. 
So anyway, if you're thinking about going to Egypt, take a look out there on the table and see if that might be something that would be uh, of interest to you. Now before Ed and I uh, do the meditation, um, which is going to be to take everything or most of what I can remember of what John just shared with us and really grounding it and really sending it out there. And please turn off your cell phones. I just got a message. Please, that's a great thing to remember, and I'm sorry I forgot that earlier. But uh, one thing, you know, John and I have another thing in common besides a desire for the world waking up, and that is we're both golfers. And I don't know, many of you may or may not know, it really doesn't matter, but uh, for 30 years my career was that of a professional golfer, and uh, that was... Um, and that's a, something I don't even do at all anymore. I just don't play a bit and doesn't, uh, for the time being, doesn't interest me. Maybe when I retire someday I'll do it again, who knows. But uh, that being said, when you were speaking of, of the story of the mastery over the ponds, I, I have to share a joke with you. So, uh, because I believe waking up is about humor as well. And there was, uh, one day Moses and Jesus were playing golf. And I apologize for those of you that have come to the Namaste Center and heard this before, but it is fun. But Moses and Jesus are playing golf, and they're on a par three. And anyway, and it's over water. And anyway, Moses gets out his little seven iron, and he hits a perfect shot, and it lands in the middle of the green. And Jesus gets up to hit, and he pulls out a eight iron. Takes a swing, hits the shot, plops right in the water. And he's like, Burr. so then he goes again, hits the eight iron again, plops in the water. Well, he does this a few more times, and Moses says, Jesus, wait, man. He says, why don't you take a little more club? I don't think you have enough club. And he's, Jesus says, Moses, Arnold Palmer uses an eight iron, so can I. And so, so Moses just shook his head, and next thing you know, Jesus ran out of golf balls, and he walked down to the pond, and all of a sudden, he starts walking on water. And the foursome came up to the tee behind these two fellas. And they looked at Moses and said, who's that guy I think he is, Jesus Christ? And he said, no, Arnold Palmer. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to uh, take a, a moment to uh, invite Ed Carrasquillo up to join me. And unfortunately, Tim is not able to join us today, I'm sorry to say, but uh, Ed is, uh, Ed and I, I'm sure, will be able to pull this off. We have done this many times. Uh, Ed accompanies me with meditation every week at the Namaste Center. By the way, uh, Jagdish also uh, offers gong uh, meditations at the Namaste Center on occasion and yoga, uh, Kundalini yoga. So. You're getting a taste of our wonderful crew of people. And I'm gonna actually, I can't give you my mic because I, yeah, because I've got to see it. But uh, I'm sure that we can do this, but um, I'd like to invite everybody. I want, I want us to really take this next few minutes to heart because we're coming together here today. You know, we all know the shtick, okay? We've been to these seminars, we've, We've certainly read the books, we've meditated, we, we know what to do, but now it's really time to live it. I do have great hope and confidence for the future of our planet and our world and everyone in it. And I just know that through each and every one of us, um, the greatest gift we can offer is our own personal awakening. So I'd like you to just close your eyes, uncross your legs, take a few deep breaths, and allow yourself to relax in your chairs. Allow your mind to be still. And just continue to breathe. And with each breath, allow yourself to let go. Allow yourself at this time to open your heart and see yourself connecting with each beautiful soul in this room as we create one voice, one heart, a power so great that no darkness can enter in. 
be still and know that you are divine. You are here today because you have heard the call, you have the desire to awaken to your greatness, to your divinity, the truth of who you are. We take this moment in eternity and we sincerely Make the pledge, make the commitment to ourselves in the world to let go of all thoughts that hurt, all feelings and actions, behaviors that no longer serve us. We choose to come here today to be cleaned, renewed, and to remember who we are as children of God. We envision a world where all prosper, all beings are healthy, happy, and serving and blessing each other in all we do. We envision a world where peace, love, Prosperity, happiness are the goals, and those goals transcend all of our little-mindedness, all of our judgments. For this is the time to bring the manifestation of heaven, of God's will into each and every moment. Feel this energy, this light, as it permeates your entire being, touching every cell, bringing healing, bringing light to where there was darkness. Transforming fear to love.
in this room, together, we have created a vortex of a light and energy so powerful that our world's vibration has been lifted greatly. We send this love and ask that it bathe Mother Earth and all of her children. And may we go from this point forward choosing love, choosing peace, being the light of the world. And so it is. So at this point in time, this will be our first opportunity to share our gratitude with the conference. And I'd like to just take a moment before we pass the baskets to, um, to just uh, remind you this beautiful statement, which is, we accept your donations with deep humility and gratitude. And we know that you have many options where you give your financial gifts. We honor your gift by asking that the source of all abundance accept your gift of love and ask that it be expanded and returned to you a thousand times over. Your gift is precious and will help us assist and support all of us in creating a smooth and joyous journey through the world and its challenges. Thank you for giving from your heart. Thank you. Uh, Coptic, who do they make the checks? Coptic Fellowship, right? Coptic Fellowship. Yes, checks, and then back at the back table during the break, there's also an opportunity to, to do a credit card if you choose. And your donations are tax deductible, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> 